Hello friends. In the last video, we learned about different states of the process in an operating system. In this video, we are going to learn about process creation. Uh, we talked about a state, a state called new in the last video. So that was the first state a process goes into. And we will talk about that state in this video. So let's look at the topics which we will be covering in this video. First, we'll, we will start with what is an init process. Then we will uh, talk about process creation using fork. Then we will have uh, how a child process differs from a parent. Then we will talk about three other uh, system calls like exec, wait and exit. And at last, we will write a program and understand the process creation. Let's first start with what is an init, init process. init process so this is the first program that is started on the system so the first not program first process that is started started on a system and this process will have the PID of one. So this is the first process that is started on a system when the system boots up and which will have the PID van and all the other process that runs on the system will be direct or indirect children of uh, any process. All other processes running on the system will be direct or indirect children of this process. Let's now look at one major drawback of using init. So we already have talked that the main function of the init is to start the other system and user programs. So how, how does init start is let's say you have four programs which init has to start. So it started serially. So it will start the uh, first program and wait till it has started. Then it will go to the second program and start it. Then it will go to the third. Then it will go to the third, fourth. So it will go in serial order. So it won't do it parallelly like it will start 1 and 2 at the same time and 3 and 4 at the same time. So this is the one of the major drawback of using init. Starts task serially and this uh, what this does is it causes long delay. Boot process. This is the one of the major drawback of using init. So uh, we have some other implementations uh, which are like alternatives of the init, which are mostly used in uh, modern operating system. Some of the popular alternatives are systemd. Then we have up to start. So in modern operating system, uh, most of these are used, and init is not used because of the drawback we have. It, it takes a lot of time for the init to start all the process, since it does serially. System D and up to start, these are done parallelly, so it does not have to wait for one completion. So it can start four at the same time, or two, first and second at the same time, three and four at the same time. So it becomes faster. Let's now look at a command uh, called ps tree, which is available in uh, Linux kernels, so Linux operating systems like Ubuntu and Red Hat. 
So let's look at the process as tree. So let's go to the system and we can just type man pst to first understand about this graph command. So pst display tree of processes. So you see in the description here, pst shows running process as a tree. The tree is rooted in either PID or init if PID is omitted. So let's use this PST command. PST minus T. So if you see here, so system D is the first process that is started, which has a PID one. So that's what I talked about. It. Init is not used in the modern operating systems. System D is used. So this is uh, Ubuntu, and this is the system D is used with PID one. And it has started other services like VOX, v, sorry, VBOX service. And this VBOX service has other children like auto point control, this all. And if you see, all the other processes are children of this uh, system D, either directly or indirectly. So these are direct children, this all. So uh, I mean, the, this line, all are direct children. And if you see, let's say, a process called PS3 that I'm running. So this is like indirect children. Of the system D. We are going to look into like how this process, uh, these all process are created by the system D and all the process like how SSD is created by system D, then how SSD is creating another SSD instance, and then this is creating bash process. So we are going to look into how these processes are created in the operating system. Process creation using form. No. So fork is mostly used in all the Linux kernel to uh, create a process and if you go for windows uh, it will be create process command create process so this is used in Windows to create a process. We will look into uh, for command here, how fork is used to create a process. So what fork does is, so fork uh, is not exactly a system call. So fork is a kind of library, library, which we can use in C, C++ programs to create a new process. And the system uh, the system call that is associated with for is clone. This clone is the system call here which is associated with this for. That just means that uh, so for is uh, called in the C or C plus program. Okay, this for will then call this clone command to create the process. So for what it does it creates a the child process that is a copy of it parent process the parent of the current process so we have let's say this is the init program okay this is the init program and this is the current process which is running this is the first process that is running with PID1 now this will start other processes with by using for Let's understand what does uh, this current process and the child process differs in. So what I mentioned here is that, that is a copy of the current process. But it's not the exact copy of the current process. So there are some difference between this pro current process and the child process. Let's look at the difference, where they differ. So they, of course, differ in their PID. So since this is a child process, new process, the current process and the child process will have a different PID. Then it will also differ in pending signals. So these pending signals are not inherited by the child. What is what this means is so we have already talked about signals in the last video. So let's say the current process has some pending signals. So those pending signals won't, won't be inherited by the child. Then we have memory logs. 
So let's say the parent process, like the current process, will be uh, locking some of the memory areas in the main memory. So for let's for some purpose, we uh, I'm not going to know why it is locking those, but let's say for some purpose, we locking those uh, main memory area. Let's say parent process has locked this memory area. So this won't be inherited by the child process. Another is process utilization info. So let's say the parent process would have run for let's say for two minutes. It would have used some thirty percent memory. So these all won't be inherited by the child. So child will start with the all the def default value, empty values. So initially, its timer will be set to zero. So it has uh, used uh, zero minute. So of the CPU, then it will keep on increasing. Then we have timers. These also won't be inherited by the child. So most timers, like they are used by the process. Like uh, let's say it is waiting for something, and when the timer expires, it can carry on that thing. So timers are used for those things by the process. These also won't be inherited. Now there is record log. Record logs are the file logs. So we already talked about memory logs. So this these are the logs which are present in the main memory. So record logs are present normally on the file blocks or the entire file. So these logs also won't be inherited by the child. Now let's come to an interesting question that that there will be some memory associated with the uh, current process or the parent process. So my question is: Is the process address space duplicated? What I mean is that so this is the main memory, and this let's say this memory is used by the current process. So this memory has been allocated to the current process. Now, when a child comes, when a child is born out of this parent process, will this be duplicated? That means, let's say another, will another memory area be created, which will be of the same size of this. This two will be of same size, and all this data, whatever is present here, will be copied to this. So, does does this happen or not? So, this is the question here. When a child process is created, the answer for this question is no. So traditionally, if you see, traditionally, yes, but in the modern uh, fork implementation, it's no. Uh, we will look at how the how it is implemented when we look at uh, another important function called copy on write. Also called when we look at this copy on write in latter part. We will uh, discuss why the pages are not duplicated and how these are used by the child process. How the how I mean sharing happens between the parent and the child process. Let's now look at what happens after a process is created. So let's look in terms of execution. In terms of execution, what can happen? First thing that can happen is that parent continue to execute concurrently. So both the child and parent are executing concurrently. Another thing can happen is parent waits until it's. Children has completed the task. These two things can happen in terms of execution. And what can uh, happen in terms of memory? We already talked about memory space. The first thing could happen is child can have a exact duplicate of the parent's memory. 
is duplicate of parent process. Another thing could happen is a new program is loaded into the site. We will look uh, into all these four, the parent continuum. So, we we'll look at some examples. So, it's like all these four can happen, but we we'll look at how this happens and which are the frequent, uh, which are the frequent of this which happen. So, which of these happens frequently. So, first take, uh, add an example of using for command. So, we have a program here. So I'm just writing a sample code in C. So it's using for. Now this for, uh, the output of the for will be different for both the child and the parent. So for child, the output of the for will be zero. And for the parent, the output of this for command with so MPID will be non-zero. And this mostly will be the PID uh, of child or mostly all this. So let's look at three things that can happen now. So one thing that could happen is if PID is less than zero, it's negative. So in this case, what happens? A process is not created and there is some, some uh, issue. Like one thing would happen is there, there is no memory left. Uh, in the RAMs, so all the RAM memory is used, so we cannot get a new process. There could be some other units also. Else if PID equal to equal to zero. So we already talked about so if PID is zero, that means uh, it's the child here. So here child code, so child code, you can write a child code here. Else so is now it means that this is the parent here we can write the parent code so this is the normal uh, thing that happened so now we can have like every talk about many cases here right parent continues to execute uh, concurrently or uh, parent waits until children has completed now also child process duplicate of so these all things get modified here inside the child code and the parent code in the next video, we are going to look at three other system calls. Those are exec, wait, and exit. We have looked at fork in this video, and we will be looking at other three important uh, system calls which are used in process creation exec, wait, and exit. And then we will discuss how, I mean, how we can use these functions to modify the behavior of parent and child process. Thank you.